Monetization of data, legal perspective, and, and the subtitle I added is not in, in, in the paper of the conference, is sharing the data dividend. It's something, it's an ID, it's a work in progress, so please don't hesitate to tell me that uh, whatever I will say to you today is not relevant, certainly non feasible and completely uh, um, completely lunatic. Uh, but still, I will try to explain. Uh, first, uh, so I think, is this this? First, uh, I want to recall that from a legal perspective, there is no such definition as what is a da data. Um, the definition is, is really blurred. You also, you always have definition related to a regime, a specific regime, personal data, public interest data, security data, um, everything is potentially a data. Uh, I've been working on, uh, for the Ministry of Culture on the Conseil Supérieur de la Propriété Littéraire Artistique lately, we have released a report on copyright, digital content and data, but uh, a work, uh, for example, might be considered as a data or as a, a, a database or a set of data. So it depends on, on the dimension uh, with which you consider the element. Do you consider the work as a whole or are the part of the information that are embedded in the work or the information which is the work? So here you have the data, potentially, even though it's treated as a, a copyrighted work. Uh, we have uh, 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 many uh, scholars trying to discuss various definition of what would be data. And there is a very interesting distinction that has been made by Rob Kitchen um, that distinguishes between data that are representative in nature, data that are implied, and data that, that are derived. Because on the same set of data, you would have, for example, Let's take the copyright, because it's what I know the most, the work, and which would be the uh, uh, data representative in nature. And you would have maybe the implied data, which would be the met metadata that designated the work, the authorship, uh, which is an element of the work, but is also an, an external data. And you would have also derived data, which are the usage data of this work, for example. So you have several layers when you are distributing a work, for example, of data that are encompassed in this distribution. Um, data is not covered by a single text, and it, there might also be overlap between digital content, such notion like information or works. Uh, we shall also maybe sometimes distinguish between the data in itself and the aggregate, uh, the, data, the data set, the set of data, the database. And we uh, don't agree uh, also on the function of the data. Data might be an asset. It may be considered as a, a, the result of a labor. It might be considered as an infrastructure. We have several reports addressing data lately and considering them from various perspectives. Um, and this can be shown in, for example, the uh, last development in the recent legal uh, EU legislation, some instruments are pending, some are really uh, already adopted at the left, and you see, so there are uh, the G GDPR that we all know, but there is also the regulation on the free flow of non-personal data. You have a, a regulation on the portability of online content services, which addresses questions of data. You have the proposal on directive on provision of digital content, who also is uh, about data, and so on and so on. So we have uh, no single entry to define what is a data according to the law. And uh, um, the problem is that the same data can be considered variously from various legal perspective and some legal regime may be accumulating on the same set of data and may also be conflicting. 
So we have several models which might conflict. Um, and we also have harsh discussion pending on what would be the proper answer, the proper legal tool to monetize the data. And as you know, some people advocate very strongly in favor of an ownership model, which would be based on IP system, where some are more uh, focused on the technical control, which also uh, leads to exclusivity, um, less exclusive than just data holding through trade secret, which is a, f a sort of de facto exclusivity, but once the data is released, it's been shared. Uh, then you have the data sharing contractual model that, for example, we go to uh, open data, open data licenses uh, between people that are willing to share data for free or uh, for uh, money. And we have data sharing legal obligation, like for uh, uh, we have an open data uh, legislation in France where you are compelled to display some data and to share some data for research, for example, and this is not according your uh, will that these data are shared, but because the law imposes that to you. And lately, you can also consider data as commons. This is also a theoretical model, but uh, many people, like uh, <coughs> a, a, a famous women Nobel Prize, uh, are advocating that we shall maybe consider data as, as commons. OK, um, from exclusivity to inclusivity, this is the same. And in, in yellow, well, in orange, you see where we have already um, legislation taking place. We, also, we can also consider these several conflicting models according to what kind of control does it grant uh, or would be granted by these different models. Uh, so you would have models of control ex ante in the uh, monopoly situation of um, the IP, for example, that you have to ask prior authorization to the holder of the data set in order to have access to the data. And then you have the monetization taking place, like you license your uh, IP rights. You would license your rights, your owner rights on the data. Um, you can have also a monetization of the access to control without considering the monopolization of the data itself, but the fact that you are the only person in charge of, of controlling the access to, so you make the monetization of the access. Uh, the same with the trade secret. But you also have ex-past control models, like <coughs> uh, I will focus on those. Data portability and data dividend, what I call data dividend, which would be uh, pieces of legislation that compel the uh, data processor to share the data or to uh, retrieve the data or to to give you back data that you have that you have been processing with it. So here you would have a, a situation like in the GDPR Article 20 for the portability. I will go back on that, where uh, data personal data are being processed, but the person, the individual, may claim to have his data back uh, in order to maybe uh, bring his data somewhere else in another for another service. And then you can see, is there here something like an economic value? This uh, right to portability uh, might be a, a way of monetizing data also. Right. Um, whatever, I will be very straightforward on this. I'm very skeptical on the uh, possibility to copy paste one uh, existing model and to say, well, this is the answer for data. This is the legal regime that we should copy paste. Um, and uh, many uh, advocate for, as I said, the regime of data ownership, many advocate it against. As you might know, the regulation on free flow of data was uh, really driven by this discussion. And at the end of the day, 
uh, well, the anti-property uh, one, because there's no such thing as ownership of data in the free flow of data regulation. Um, you can also consider that maybe ownership uh, would be uh, not the exclusive right as we consider it from a, a civil law perspective, which is exclusive right, but another kind of ownership which would be more uh, centered on sovereignty, meaning, uh, well, I call this ownership, but this is not ownership. This is a, a power of control that I have on data. And then you can see such elements of thinking in all the um, public uh, reflection about we shall keep control over our data or localize our data on our territory in order to, well, uh, to, <laughs> to avoid uh, 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 privacy breaches or whatever. And then we have this kind of uh, so-called ownership, which is not really an ownership, but is a kind of control based on the sovereignty of our data. We shall maybe have a sui generis right, or maybe be inspired by the intellectual property. I, as I said previously, I'm very skeptical about the possibility to uh, be inspired of the IP economy and the IP scheme to uh, transpose it to the data economy, uh, just because they are so different there are so different uh, elements, but I may be uh, uh, here trespassing my, my field of, uh, of uh, knowledge because uh, some economics element may, 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 may contradict what I'm saying. But most of the time, we have a right in IP which is grounded on national legal monopoly that are granted by the will of the state to some person in counterpart of the benefit for the welfare, whereas in the data economy, there's no such thing as reward monopoly. It's a de facto monopolization because of the economic power deriving from the possibility to aggregate data. Um, and I can go on, uh, the, the, the licensing are not the same. Uh, there is no such thing as exceptions for, uh, for the, uh, for the, the, the data economy, uh, whereas in the IP there is a balance of the public interest and the private interest through uh, the exceptions. I just want to recall maybe this case, which is a little bit underestimated, even though it seems to me very important, the Ryanair case uh, of the Court of Justice that in 2014, uh, the court was asked whether the database of Ryanair, which would not be protected through copyright or sui generis right databases, sui generis right, shall nevertheless, the whole order of this database, uh, comply with the exceptions that were granted in the database directive. And the court say, well, no, no. Well, it, it would have had to, to, com to comply with the exception if it were protected. But as it is not protected through an intellectual property right, then you don't have to balance any, any pro and cons. You just, you just can uh, um, uh, have the most uh, uh, favorable access to your data for the processor and the user. It doesn't have a right, any, any right to say, well, uh, it's, for, it's for research or it's for cultural purposes that I want to access to the data. This is not relevant in the data economy because there is no such thing at the moment as public interest. So if we think of copy-pasting things like copyright for, uh, as a model for uh, data economy, then we shall have this balance of interest that, that should be taken into account, which is not actually the case for the moment. Well, um, as I said previously, everything is data, uh, overlap, conflicting possibility, uh, co conflicting legislation with various objectives. Um, and you see in the legislation, you have the regulation 
um, on the free flow of data, for example, but even in the GDPR, you have two conflicting objectives. Then one is protecting uh, the individuals, but one is enhancing the circulation of data. How can you, in a single text, say that you will manage to do both, protecting the individual and making a more uh, 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 the flow of data more easy? It's very complicated. Uh, and I guess we didn't manage to, to do that really, uh, really carefully. Um, so you have conflicting interests underlying the various uh, the various discussion and the various uh, texts. It is my thinking that we need to move from this distributive approach to a general approach. So I mean, you, at the left, you have a millefeuille, and then you can see the separate layers of the millefeuille, whereas here you have a marbre, and you cannot separate the white, <laughs> the, the white from the chocolate. Uh, so because it's all <laughs> mingled, it's all entangled. And uh, when you talk about big data economy, well, actually, you talk about something which is different from the addition of the data. The big data, as we say, we talk about the whole, and the whole is not the uh, is not limited to the mere sum of the part of the whole. I quote here the, uh, uh, a sentence of Matisse I heard this uh, this week, which is one centimeter square of blue is not the same blue as the as the same blue painted in one meter square. So it's really interesting, depending the dimension of the thing that you are taking into account, you shall have different perspective and, and have different regime. I'm sorry because I will take a French example and maybe uh, it's not very uh, understandable for uh, foreigners, but we have a concept which is universalité de droit or universalité de fait in French law, like for the fonds de commerce, when you have a, a business, you run a business, we have a, a legal entity that is protecting the business called the fonds de commerce, and it is made of several different layers, the trademark, uh, the right the right to uh, uh, whatever, there are several elements, <laughs> the trademark, the, the customers, and so on. So uh, many values that are aggregated in something which is considered as a whole and has a regime for the whole. And this is possibility, there is a possibility to transmit the fond de commerce, so this universality de fait, per se, notwithstanding the specific regime applicable to the elements. So this would be the model, maybe, to think of, which is think globally. What you see is an, an aggregate of things, which are, if you take them individually, they are not worth anything. But at the end of the day, it makes this. And everything is a data. Uh, the all, the, each piece is data, but the whole result is also a data. So we have maybe to take into account uh, a new or to imagine a new regime, which would be not conflicting, but not be limited by uh, the conflicting regime of the part. Yesterday, we have had a small talk, but we have a problem there, because if with the definition of uh, uh, personal data, which is very broad. Once you have a personal data in a data set, everything shall be covered in this data set by the uh, GDPR legislation of the protection of, of, uh, of, um, of personal data, because there is in the data set an element which is a personal data. So you have this uh, viral application of the law that uh, impede the possibility to treat the whole differently from the part. Okay, so let uh, tell me how much time do I still have because this was only the first idea. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, very quickly, uh, I, I will okay. make two two proposals uh, to 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 discuss. I will launch two ideas uh, 
uh, about how to maybe benefit from the data economy and how to do it uh, by just merely and quickly recalling that we are also evolving in a, a, a framework of platform economy, but we have been addressing that at large so far. So I don't need to recall what are the specificities of this platform economy and the bottleneck effect of the platform. So how to benefit from this data economy? As I said previously, I don't think that exclusive property is needed because we have here reverse goods. We have a data that can be shared, and uh, Etienne Fister uh, recalled that uh, we can share the data um, quite easily from a technical point of view and from an economic point of view, even if there might have problems as to the efficiency of sharing the data, but the possibility of sharing is very um, envisageable. So you really have to take that into account. It's not something that you cannot share, and you can share with people without uh, impeding the market of the person from whom you have the data. So uh, the cost of sharing is not high, and the risk of sharing is maybe not higher uh, uh, neither. Uh, more than uh, uh, having, I'm sorry, more than, no, it's, it's there. Uh, more than having an exclusive property, I think it would be better to think how to, to give control over the data through granting several prerogatives to what I call the right holder, the data holder. I, I didn't say owner because I won't say holder. So, okay, you hold the data. You have the data, meaning I have them uh, de facto, doesn't mean that they I own the data, right? So this is to, to, to make, I think it's, is it clear? Yeah, it's clear. <laughs> so I can be a right holder without having an ownership. I can just have the, the situation where I hold something. Um, so the first prerogative is, is already existing. And uh, uh, it is my, my thinking that we maybe have in various texts something which is expressing a general principle, which is the prerogative of portability, right maybe to portability. <coughs> I, I will go very quickly uh, here, but if you look carefully in the last text that I've been adopted and I mentioned, I've been mentioning before, you see that this principle of portability is, is coming back several times. So you can find it in the GDPR, Article 20, uh, this, this is the right for the person to receive the personal data concer concerning him in a format which is structured, commonly used, and machine-readable, and have the right to transmit those data to another controller. So I can receive my data, I can de get, get them back, and bring them to some, some other uh, processor of data. And I can do this also because the format in which my data have been restituted are um, compatible, interoperable, which is cornersome. If, if we, we don't have this requirement of, of uh, uh, open format data, I would say, we cannot share the data. But you also have uh, expression of the portability uh, idea or principle in the free flow of data regulation, Article 6.1, uh, Paragraph 1.A. Um, okay, the porting of data. The Commission shall encourage and facilitate the development of self-regulatory codes and conduct in order to contribute to a competitive data economy based on principle of transparency and interoperability. And then you see the link between porting of data and interoperability principle. You also find the portability on the uh, regulation 
on cross-border portability, uh, the name of it, uh, in the title. So here we have an access and the use of the content which is guaranteed by uh, the regulation, uh, which is the possibility to uh, bring with me my, my services when I, I am moving from one country to another, so my content, so my data. Um, and, and lately, uh, this is uh, in the French uh, law uh, for uh, um, the Digital Republic, la, la, République, la Loi pour la République Numérique, has embedded a provision uh, which is a portability uh, principle for the uh, co consumers, so it's a B2C approach, which is an obligation limited to the most important services. Not everyone is debtor of this obligation to comply with this right to portability. I'm sorry, but it's in very small uh, written, but in a nutshell, it, it triggers something like a portability by design, which would be a free functionality that the, the pro that data processor has to provide a free functionality to the consumer for, for him to retrieve uh, is files and all the data resulting from the use of the consumer account, except those that were subject to a significant enrichment by the data processor. In other words, it means that not only this portability principle here uh, grants you the right to go to to bring back your data to you, but also to benefit from data that have been made or uh, constr uh, constructed or uh, generated by the processor at the occasion of your data and to share them with you. And this is, this is, uh, this is it. So is it a right to portability that we shall generalize, not in the B2C uh, only, but in the B2B relation also, once I put data somewhere and I, make, uh, I share the data with someone who process the data for me or with me, I will always have the right to go back, to get back my data, whatever, even if I, I, it's a cloud system and I, I don't have any technical uh, control over the data, so I will be guaranteed to have those data back. Um, but also, uh, <laughs> this right to portability would pose question as it to which as to the uh, in which format shall I have those uh, data back in order to bring them in another service and also shall the processor erase the data after uh, I have exercised my right which is not sharing the data anymore and uh, having maybe uh, a, a different situation. So will, will it be for free or is it something that you would pay to get back your, your data, whatever? You have uh, uh, any, many questions about this data possibility. Um, this example of uh, application of uh, uh, <coughs> data portability to uh, IP content uh, then we would have, for example, if I have my work uh, which uh, I share on the platform and I exercise my right to portability, uh, then I could ask at any moment to remove the work and also the metadata on the work from the platform to maybe choose another way of distributing this work, right? So this would be limited to this. Uh, grounding, and it's nearly finished, <laughs> grounding on, on this uh, uh, provision of the Code de la Consommation, you've seen that well, it goes further than only retrieval of my own data. It shares the data of the data processor. And this is my suggestion, might be irrealistic, but I share it with you, which is, if we want to monetize, and many people are really concerned by, because by distributing their work, content, whatever, data through 
data processors, they lose the control and they lose the, the relationship with the final client. They don't have the possibility to personalize the service because it's the platform that uses the data uh, of usage uh, and that hold them, that hold those data and don't share them with the content holder, with the data holder. So my suggestion is that we shall maybe think of an instrument that would force or might enhance the sharing of data that are essential data, but also maybe derivative data or implied data. Uh, why? Because this would be uh, uh, in line with the co-petition uh, views, um, because the value of this data is a result of a partnership, because there's no usage of the data without a platform to collect it, but there's no usage of the data without object to use. So it's like uh, I bring value, you bring value, and we share the, the, the dividend. That's why I call that the dividend. Like in a company, when I bring my, uh, my money and then you bring your work and we share all together and then if there are profits, we share the profit and we distribute the dividend. And this would be the possibility to share this data dividend. Um, this would be a possibility for uh, the data holder to keep the relationship with the final customers and personalize uh, my market. Uh, to also to address a, a, a very complicated issue from a legal perspective, which is the distribution of liability. For example, when I have a problem of, uh, of uh, uh, a delivery of a service uh, and there is a, a mismatch or something doesn't work, you never know who is in charge of the quality of the service, of the quality of the data. Is it the distributor? Is it the content holder? Is it the data holder that is responsible for the harm caused by the, the bad service? And it will be also in line with the uh, platform loyalty. Is it OK? Is there a problem? I, and it's my last slide, OK? <laughs> so <laughs> don't worry. Uh, so many questions. Uh, actually, which scope, until which uh, uh, level of data we could uh, bring this right to dividend, right to share the data dividend, uh, which scope, the metadata, which the breaking data, the non-breaking data, the, uh, the data that are enriched by the processor, to which extent, through which model, which model, open data, France, legal obligation, whatever. And who would be the debtor, actually? Many, many questions remaining, many obstacles. Is the aggregate breakable? Is it feasible to, to recoup the data? Is it possible economically speaking, technically speaking, and so on? Uh, is, it, is it going beyond? Uh, the protection of trade secret, and blah, blah, blah. So many, many questions <laughs> that I will not address today. <laughs> but I leave the floor to you and to my uh, estimated colleague. I'm sorry. Thank you, Valérie.